Let me give you another example to compare and show the difference between goal setting. I would like to give an example of the man, of the person who had very small means but reached the heights in his field. The man, the person who changed my life and converted me from a doctor of a body to a doctor of soul. And I'm sure you know the name of that man. He's none other than Sheikh Ahmed Tidad. Let us compare his goal setting. Sheikh Ahmed Didad. And if you know the life history of Sheikh Ahmed Didad, he acquired education only till standard six. Because both his ends could not meet, he was forced to leave his education. After passing standard six, he was forced to leave his education. A man with small means. He was forced to leave the country, India, where he was born. Then he goes to South Africa. He does a job of a salesman. He works in a furniture shop. He does the job of driving, etc. And while he was in South Africa, he used to constantly be harassed by the Christian missionaries who used to tell Islam is a useless religion. It is merciless. They used to attack Islam. And because he used to get harassed, a desire came in his heart that I want to reply all the allegations against Islam made by these Christian missionaries. I want to give a fitting reply to these Christian missionaries. Imagine a man only studied to standard six. But naturally he had faith in Allah. He strived. He stumbled across a book. Books which were lying in a room which had dust on it. He stumbled across a book by the name of Izar al-Haq. The truth revealed by Maulana Rahmatullah Karanvi. And he gets the direction for his goal. That's how he started. And he strived for 40 years till the time he challenged the stalwarts of Christianity. Imagine a six standard pass man strive for 40 years and challenge the stalwarts of the world. So much so that in 1986, he was about to debate Reverend Jimmy Swaggart. And at that time, in 1980s, Jimmy Swaggart was the number one most powerful, most famous Christian televangelist. Just a few weeks before his debate, one of the fans of Sheikh Didat told him, that Sheikh Ahmed Didat, I'm your fan, but I want to give you an advice. This man, Jimmy Swaggart, I know him. I have studied him. Please don't debate him. He will chew you and he will spit you out. Imagine a fan of Didat giving advice to Didat. You don't debate this Jimmy Swaggart. You don't know him, I know him. He will chew you and he will spit you out. The person who was the most famous televangelist, who owned television channels, whose budget was more than a million dollars a day to keep his head above water. Our Sheikh Ahmed Didat, mashallah. With Allah on his side, he goes to USA in the hometown of that Christian missionary, in the country, very famous. He goes and he has a debate. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, with Allah's help, he turns the tables over. Imagine a man of small means, not even past school, leave aside being a graduate, challenges the stalwarts of Christianity, so much so that he became the biggest stumbling block for the Christianity of the world, for the Christian missionaries. One man alone, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he challenged the whole of Christianity.
let's analyze this goal setting. Number one, the Islamic. I. Was it Islamic? Was it according to Quran and Sahih Hadith? Was it for Allah and His Rasul? But naturally it was. That's the reason he was able to achieve his goal. Number two, was it specific? Yes. His goal was specific. I want to reply to the allegations against Islam. Specific. I want to give a fitting reply. Remove the misconceptions about Islam that is there in the minds of the non-Muslim. Number three, was it lucrative? Was it profitable? He wanted profit in Akhira. And inshallah, inshallah, Allah will grant him Jannah, inshallah. But besides being profitable in the Akhira, it even profited him here. You know, a number six standard past man, in 1986, he gets the biggest award in the Muslim world. He is awarded the King Faisal Award for service in humanity. A six standard man. He didn't do for the award. Maybe he got $200,000. He didn't do it for that. Maybe for the gold. King Faisal Award. He didn't do it for that. He did for Allah and his Rasul. Allah profits him in Akhirah and even in this world. Lucrative. A. Was it apt? Was it appropriate? Very apt. At the right time. His style, everything at that time. When the Christian missionaries were hammering the Muslims. Our morale was at the lowest. This man, Sheikh Ahmad Didal, he inspired thousands of youngsters, including myself. We could at least raise our head and stand. Apt. M. Was it measurable? Yes. What did he do? He collected the books of Christianity, the Christian missionaries who wrote against Islam. You know, John Gilchrist, all these books, Jimmy Swaggart, and started replying. When they attacked the Quran and Islam, he replied and he studied their scripture, Bible, used the verse of the Quran and implemented on them and he found results. Measurable. I, what was his intention? His intention wasn't to become famous. His intention wasn't to win the King Faisal Award. His intention was to please Allah and his Rasul. C, was he consistent? Yes, he was. Imagine, he struggled and strived for 40 years. And if you know his history, his office was a small, dungy place. And he tells us that even to print a black and white pamphlet, a thousand quantity, they used to have a meeting. Let's have a meeting. Can we print thousand quantity of a black and white pamphlet? MashaAllah. Consistent. Kept on striving. Till he reached his goal. The difference that we find in Wilma Rudolph and Sheikh Ahmed Didat is, that the goal of Wilma Rudolph, it was short-sighted. It was more for this world. But the goal of Sheikh Ahmed Didad, it was far-sighted. And it was for the Akhira. And inshallah, Allah will give him reward in the Akhira and even give him reward in this world. I give you the example of Sheikh Ahmed Didad. Six standard pass, challenge the standards of Christianity. And Sheikh Ahmed Didad, you know, asked him, Uncle, in 1987 I met him the first time. You know, I was his driver, chauffeur. Wherever he used to go, I used to take him, because so I could spend more time with him. And Uncle, why are you so aggressive? He told me, son, I'm not aggressive, I'm militant. I'm militant. You can fight the devil with two ways, holy water or fire. I chose the fire. That was his reply. And when I started my dawa, I used his material, but I was very soft. Very soft, very kind. No results. In the medical college, I started dawa. Then I became militant. More militant than Sheikh Didad. And wallah, what results I got. My Muslim friends used to run away. I was left alone with the non-Muslims. 
the results I got after being militant, then Marshal Allah gave me daya. Coming more on the stage, I became soft. I became so soft that when the questioners abused me, I used to smile. So Sheikh Didat. Then he gave me the title. First he gave me Didat Plus. Then when he saw me, son, they're abusing you, they're cursing you, and you're smiling. Then he gave me the title that, son, what took me 40 years to achieve, you have achieved it in four years. And Alhamdulillah. Then I was inspired by Sheikh Ahmad Didad. Ah, this is the man. And my focus changed. And that's how, mashallah, he told me that, son, I have done research and study in Christianity and Islam. You study other religions. Christianity is like everything on a platter. Sheikh Didad did the job so well, everything on a platter. It's a cakewalk. If you read Sheikh Didad's book, you can even debate the Pope. So then I studied Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, science, other subjects, and mashallah. As to admire the crowd that Sheikh Didat, the largest audience he addressed in Birmingham, 12,000 people. MashaAllah. 